Hello and welcome to Africa Today. I am Esther Mokwariola. We sincerely apologize for coming on behind schedule. Now from the handshakes of bilateral relations to collective destinies carved out as regions, lessons from globalization have shown that no nation can attain prosperity with the mindset of individuality and Africa isn't an exception. But in trying to juggle between regional integration and national sovereignty, recent years have shown that the continent remains very diverse and complex to possibly head in one direction at the same time. And so we ask, what are your thoughts on the role of West Africa's regional bloc echoers in fostering integration and development? You can join the conversation and share your thoughts with us on Twitter at TVC News NG. We take a report now and Africa Today will be right back. Welcome. The Economic Community of West African State, ECOWAS, was set up on May the 28th, 1975 to promote the economic integration of member states. The call for a strong and single currency started in 2000 when five ECOWAS members from the West African Monetary Zone aimed at establishing a currency whose exchange can be at par with the euro. Adopting a single currency for member states was again on the front burner at the ongoing second ordinary session of the ECOWAS Parliament, with the Speaker, National Assembly of Niger Republic, pushing for the implementation of the policy, a move that was applauded by some parliamentarians. But not everyone is in agreement with the policy. A differing opinion is offered by the first Vice Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament, who believes his country, Nigeria, should rather focus on making the Naira stronger and more competitive. No, I'm not in support. I'm not, I'm not in support of single currency. Why would I support single currency when we have not even found our food? Why, why are we supporting our single currency? Remember that the UK, despite being a member of EU for a very long time, still kept their pants tally. That's how to develop your economy. Your statistics must be relevant. I don't have to collect the statistics of my country by relating it to other countries. Let me know how strong my Naira is before I talk about single currency. He posits that so far, the only achievement of ECOWAS is a free movement of people across the sub-region and the ECOWAS passport. But these policies have not stopped the intimidation and harassment of West African nationals moving from their country to other West African nations. The question remains, how much of the integration goals of ECOWAS would be achieved with the adoption of a single currency, considering the polarity of the region? Welcome now. Well, before we get into the discussion of the day, let's update you on the top stories around Africa. A former militia leader from a Central African Republic known as Colonel Rambo has for the first time faced judges in The Hague on charges of war crimes and crimes against humanity. At least three people, one of them believed to be a Finland national, are feared dead after a light aircraft they were traveling in crashed in southwestern, southwestern Zimbabwe. World well, Angolan President Yao Lorenzo has compared the fight against corruption in his country to touching a wasp's net a day after his predecessor, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, refuted allegations he emptied the state's finances. Now joining me from our Abuja studio to look at the role of West Africa's regional bloc echoers in fostering integration and development is Edwin Melvin Snowway, member of Parliament in Liberia and shortly I will be having on Skype Nameke Obiariri, a policy analyst. But first off, let me thank you my guest from uh, Abuja, uh, Edwin Snowe. Thank you for your time on Africa today. So let's briefly start with this. Uh, briefly walk us through now on the, some of the policies and outcomes that have been so far reached at the ongoing uh, ECOWAS Parliament in Abuja. A 
Okay, since you're yet to understand my question, let me ask you again. I asked earlier, briefly walk us through some of the policies and outcomes that has been reached at the ECOWAS Parliament going on in Abuja. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know if I'm, if I'm on air, but uh, I think there's still a gap, there's still a break. Yes, you are on. Um, Go on. If I am. All right. Thank you very much. Well, as you know, we are currently uh, sitting, our uh, well, second ordinary sitting of the ECOWAS Parliament. And that sitting uh, is going to last for almost a month because we'll be looking at the community's budget, uh, the Finance and Administration Committee, the Admin and Finance Committee of the ECOWAS body will be meeting uh, beginning this week, tomorrow. And thereafter, they will send the budget of the community to the parliament to render its opinion on the budget. Uh, for the time being, we've been having uh, workshops, we've been having discussions, we did our country report. We've now been able to review the reports of the 15 member states to know what is obtaining out of those countries, to know what is happening, where, are we, where do we intend to go as, an, as a community. And I can say to you that ECOWAS have made significant progress from where we've come from, where we are today. Um, go are the days in the 90s and the 80s when um, our region was nothing but military zone, when you had all of the military leaders, when you, we heard more of ECOMOG and, you know, than, than ECO was. Today I think it's a different region. And the parliament is standing tall, standing strong, and the parliament is now having a new day because we now have the enhancement, the act, the enhancement power of the parliament where we can now render core decision in some of our the, the decision from the community, from the authorities or head of states. We can render opinion on the budget of the community. And I think the parliament is moving forward. Uh, besides the country report and you know the workshop we had like today on child uh, trafficking, we are now awaiting the budget of the community so that together we can see those programs. We are now leaving, graduating to a program budget where we can see how best can how best ECOWAS can enhance its uh, visibility and awareness and then formulate programs for the uh, nationals of our community. So there have been questions with regard to ECOWAS's role in fostering integration and development in the block, and some say it hasn't done a lot in terms of achieving that objective. How would you assess the role so far? Would you say it is you know, beyond expectation, or it's yet to get to that point? I think ECOWAS has done well. Um, are we there yet? No. I see the glass more as a glass half full than a glass half empty. And I think we are making significant progress. We may not be fully there, but uh, one, and you must give room for our critics, so one that says that we've not done much yet, well, let's listen to them. Let's see what recommendations they could come up with. But I would say as a community, we've done well, we're doing well, and I still see the glass as a glass half full than a glass half empty. So I think, yes, a lot needs to be done. But as a, as a community, we've graduated. That we, now we're talking about the single currency, for example, that we're graduating to. We're looking at 2020, if, you, if it's not realistic. Countries that are prepared will move forward. Our integration program, our free trade, uh, the uh, common external tariff. So there, there are a lot that ECOWAS is doing right now. Yes, we need to build on those things, but I think we've done well as a community from where so, we've come from. Right. Now, so what are those challenges that ECOWAS is left to contend with? Even though it's, from your analysis, more or less a half glass full than a half glass empty, what are those challenges that ECOWAS seems to uh, grapple with at, at, at this point? Well, challenges are numerous, though. But to start, let me start with the political issues, for example. We still have... Today, we still have some political situation in Guinea Conakry. Um, there have been some um, political motivated uh, 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 violence in that country. We have challenges in uh, Togo. As you know, the, they have been having some political issues in Togo. We have a little bit in Guinea-Bissau. Those are some political challenges. But again, um, compared to where we've come from, where we are, and that those challenges are more about uh, people are expressing their free will to demonstrate. Um, sometimes the police try to resist, which we condemn all of the time, but we're getting there. Then, of course, we're looking at the single currency. The issue of the single currency is a very, very important issue because, again, if we could be like the European Union. Now, today we have 15 countries, we have nine currencies. 
uh, the five English-speaking countries, that's namely Nigeria, Liberia, Ghana, uh, Sierra Leone, Gambia, have their own currency. Then you have Guinea-Bissau. You have um, uh, Guinea. As a matter of fact, Guinea-Bissau uses the French CIFA, so it would be eight. So Guinea Conakry and then Cape Verde have different kind of currency. Then the Francophone countries. So we are now migrating to the single currency where we'll be able to use one currency in our region, have one central bank. Sometime next week, the central bank governors of our region will be in Abuja, and we'll begin with continuing talks on the implementation of the single currency. Uh, the issue of uh, free trade, um, we still have some challenges, yes. I'm one of those in the community, and this, is, this may not be a very popular view, but I'm one of those in the community that does not subscribe to Morocco and other countries from the north coming into our community block because we have powerhouse like Nigeria that's manufacturing. We have Senegal, we have Cote d'Ivoire, you know, uh, uh, you have Ghana. Those countries are beginning to manufacture and then have cross-border trade. So if you bring in other countries from the West or other region, it's, it will be more of integration, it's going to be more of political interest. And those are some of the things that we object to in ECOWAS because mm -hmm. we need to have a free trade liberal, liberalization where our people can interact freely, where we can trade freely, where we can, we can migrate and know that if I came to Nigeria today, I mean, look at my dress code, for example. I mean, one wouldn't know that I'm not a Nigerian or I'm a Nigerian. Absolutely. Except I said, except, you know, you hear me speak. Mm. So those are the kind of integrations we look at. Those are the kind of interactions we look at in our region. And again, I, I'm one of those that are opposed to the, the, the participation or membership of Morocco, Tunisia, and other countries because I still think we need to build our West African bloc mm. using Nigeria as our hub, and then from there we can build on to extend with a truly Africa, uh, uh, echoes of peoples, then echoes of, of just the economic interests. Right, fine. Now, but let's look at this issue of uh, free movement protocol that ECOWAS guarantees the rights of uh, every citizen you know, entry to travel freely, visa-free within ECOWAS. But now there have been reports of bribes and delays at land borders, which of course hampers this uh, free movement protocol. What is the block doing to, in terms of tightening these loose ends? Well, as you know, we've introduced the ECOWAS brand card. Well, now Senegal has adopted that, Ghana has adopted that, Cote d'Ivoire. Liberia is far on our way. We hope that Nigeria, uh, being the power hub of the, our community, can do likewise. We're going to have the ECOWAS brand card so that every citizen in the community, you don't have to use a passport to, to cross the border. You can have a brand uh, ECOWAS card and you can go around the 15 uh, uh, countries. I must admit that our market women, our mothers, our sisters, our brothers, our fathers that transact through the various borders are still having some challenges. Uh, a year or two ago, we had a documentary at the ECOWAS uh, uh, Head of State Summit called the ECOWAS Taxi, where people were still receiving bribes from our people. We got complaints in our last country report uh, from, the, from the community, people moving between Nigeria and Benin and having challenges between Ghana and, Kote, uh, uh, Ghana and uh, 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 Togo, between Liberia and Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone, Liberia and Cote d'Ivoire. So there are challenges. We are having those things. But again, you know, in every, even in a household, you're always going to have a bad apple. So yes, people of those categories, of those uh, uh, characters have been weaned out of the system, but we need to do more to, to improve free trade. I mean, mm. I, can, I speak from Liberia. Mm -hmm. I know a case of Liberia where our market women uh, drive distances, going across the Liberian border through Ivory Coast or through Guinea or through uh, Sierra Leone to go in there and get the market to come back home and fish for the family. And mm. then there are times when they have challenges. Mm. They are arrested, their goods are taken away. So those are things that we strongly condemn. And that is why about a month ago, the ECOWAS parliament did a, a visibility study, a, 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 a study or oversight tour where we visited the liberia guinean border. We interacted with citizens from both sides of the border. We did the Sierra Leone liberian border. We were in Agadez, uh, Niger, people crossing their Albessa going into, uh, trying to get into Europe or going to live through via Libya. So those are things that the parliament has been very engaged with in the last few years. Mm. And I think gradually we will get there. It's, it's still a challenge. I'm not going to tell you it's not a challenge. There are right. people that come from right here, Niger, that tell us some of the challenges they have between uh, Nigeria and Niger. There are people that come from other countries and tell us some of the problems they're facing in the region. Mm. But and again, I believe that as we graduate, 
Okay, now, but, okay, sorry for f stopping your flow of thought, but now briefly before we go into our second segment, there's this issue that really bothers West Africa, which is terrorism and illegal migration. Now, how much is being done to address these concerns and the ECOWAS block? The issue of terrorism, as you know, we've had some... The issue of terrorism, as you know, we've had some um, skirmishes across the region. We had um, some in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, in Burkina Faso, we've, we've had those kind of challenges. And that is where the security cracks come in. Because sometimes the security guy tells you, look, I respect free movement, I respect free trade, but we have to ensure that the security measures are put into place to enhance free trade and free movement. So then the free movement issue comes with its own security implication. Because again, some of the guys that have been to our neighboring countries and took arms against our brothers and sisters as, you know, same color, same dress code, same language, same tribe, same everything. Mm. So those are some of the challenges that we all... Take Europe, for example. The last time there was a terrorist attack in Belgium, I mean, Paris, they came from Belgium, they drove to Paris, caused the havoc, and then drove back there. So you, those are issues that is not limited or it's not unique to West Africa. Mm. Those are issues that are still happening around the world. Those are issues that are still a big challenge. And that's why they... they, they, they integrated uh, police system or security system is very important. That's why now we have the early warning system being built in our, very, in our neighboring country. We have the ECOWAS warning system. We have, you know, other security mechanisms that have been put into place right. so that those cross-border terrorist, terroristic attacks can be put under control and that uh, the perpetrators can be arrested in a, you know, early faction or prevented, right. you know, better, for better choice of words, prevented right. so that they won't cause havoc on our people as we enhance free movement and free trade. Fine. Now, let's quickly go on a very quick break now. We will have more discussions on this very topic when we return. Stay with us. Right now, there are currently 15 member countries in the ECOWAS regional bloc, which was established 43 years ago to promote integration in order to achieve an economic and monetary union for promoting economic growth and development in West Africa. Now, as the, West, as the ECOWAS parliament continues its second ordinary session in Nigeria, single currency policy and the lingering official acceptance of the North African and Morocco it to be part of the union remains on the front burner. Well, I still have Snowway with me, Edwin Snowway, and he joins me from our Abuja studio, a Liberian parliamentarian in Nigeria. Now, let's look at this issue of a single currency. Now, what value do you think this would have on member states that are thought to be, well, consuming nations? What the issue... The issue of single currency, um, I know that there are still countries that are opposed to single currency. Liberia is in support of single currency. We believe that, uh, to, again, to enhance free trade. If I left from here, if I was to do a tour, for example, in West Africa, like I just said to you, we're talking about eight different currencies in one community. So if I went to Guinea, I would have to change to the Guinea franc. If I flew to Abidjan, I have to go to Franc Cifa. You know, if I came to Nigeria, I have to use the Naira. If I went to Ghana next door, I have to use the uh, CD. If I go to Liberia, I have to use the Liberian dollar. If I go to Sierra Leone, I have to use the Lira. So it's just the complication as a community. Mm. It's just burdensome for our people. And, but again, the issue, the biggest challenge we've had so far, for example, you're talking about um, uh, eight French-speaking countries in our region that has a central bank system using the French CIFA that is supported by the French government. You have Nigeria that has the Naira that's to some extent still strong with the support of the oil, the economy from the oil. Uh, you have Ghana that talk about gold, cocoa, you know. 
In Liberia, it's not much. Uh, the price of iron ore has declined on the world market, so we're having challenges with the export of iron ore and other raw material. Then Sierra Leone, a little bit of diamond, which is not so strong with the currency. But if we were to put all of those resources in our region together to support a single currency, mm. the, 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 the ECOWAS currency, whatever that currency is name and style of, will be a strong currency. So I believe that the issue of single currency is of vital importance to our region. Because if we're talking about truly integration, truly integrating our region, truly putting this region together as a community, then we have to cut off all those bottlenecks that prevent our people from freely interacting or free, for free, free trade, from freely in, you know, or, or going across the border. If you went across three borders today in West Africa, you have to change your money three times. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about a community, the actual meaning of a community wouldn't define that you have to change four or five currency in just trading in the region. If I went to Guinea-Bissau today, you know, I can't take the Naira there. I can't take mm. the Liberian dollar there. Mm -hmm. I would have to take the Euro or the U.S. dollars to be able to convert to their currency, and it doesn't speak well for our community. So mm. I think we need to push. Again, there are still people, there are still some big players that are still opposed mm. to the single currency. I subscribe to the single currency. Right, Liberia, absolutely. my nation, my country yeah, this supports is really, single currency. Yeah, absolutely a commendable you know, initiative, I, I would say, for the ECOWAS region. But how about other member states that may not be able now to re reach the 2020 target of meeting the micro economic criteria now to join the single currency chain. What happens to them? And that is why the authorities of head of state have agreed that by 2020, those countries that are ready will commence the process. So if you're ready to move off the single currency, we commence the process and others will follow. But again, I come back to say, you know, um, I'm here with one of my senators from Liberia called Senator Steve Zago, and he always referred to Liberia whenever he addresses Nigeria, rather. He says, bring better Nigeria. <laughs> I believe that Nigeria takes the lead. We will follow. When Nigeria sleeps, they, they, the region catches cold. When Nigeria coughs, we all, you know, catch cough. So Nigeria, again, cannot be seen as a white elephant. Nigeria has to take the lead. Nigeria has to play that leadership role. Today, my country enjoy peace today. We had a peaceful democratic uh, transition in more, one, more than 70 years. And today, we can boast of democracy in Liberia because of the role Nigeria played in, in, in Liberia, in uh, Gambia, in Sierra Leone, in Cote d'Ivoire. So you have to play that role. You right. cannot choose at which stage you are big brother and at which stage you sit on the back bench. Mm. So Nigeria has to play that role so that we all can follow. And I can okay. say to you, once Nigeria takes that lead, I know Liberia will follow, I know the Gambia will follow, I know Sierra Leone will follow. And let us, there are five English speaking countries in our region right now. Okay. All right. Four are strong. Right. That's Nigeria and Ghana. Right. And then Liberia, Guinea, Liberia, Gambia, and Sierra Leone will follow. So once Nigeria takes the lead, Every we can know follows we will progress and show that play. Liberia, Gambia, Sierra Leone will follow, and then others can join them. All board. right. And that's where we leave it for now. Thank you very much, Edwin Snow, a member of Parliament's Liberia for the ECOWAS uh, Parliament going on in Abuja. Thank you very much for your time. And unfortunately, we couldn't bring in our guests via Skype, Nameka Obiariri. I'd like to thank my guests as well. All the same for trying to reach out to us and make their contributions known on the show. Now, with the world an ever-shrinking global village, Africa must look within and take advantage of regional opportunities to grow relevance and strengthen independence. In reaching and ensuring greater heights within the sub-region, ECOWAS needs to be more effective in seeing that political stability, regional cooperation and economic integration become tools to lift millions out of poverty. And that is our package for tonight. But don't forget to join the conversation as usual on Twitter at TVC News NG and follow me for updates around Africa at Esther TVC News. Until the next one again, I am Esther Amokwariola and always remember Africa can only get better.